Jeff Kennett is the former Victorian Premier. He's also the former president of the Hawthorne Football Club. He joins us now on the phone from Melbourne to talk about the sports drug scandal. Mr Kennett, good morning. Good morning, Michael. What was your first reaction, your first emotions, I suppose, when you heard this news breaking yesterday? Uh, extreme disappointment, but in one sense, not surprised. If I could just keep my comments to the AFL, which I know better than the other codes, although my comments might easily apply to them, the AFL, we all need now to take a deep breath and just reconsider where we're at. The AFL drug code is unenforceable. Uh, it's obviously abused and evaded and misused. The only policy that will work in the interest of the clubs, the AFL and the players, is a zero-tolerance policy to drugs, be they illicit or be they performance-enhancing. I would like to suggest that is the code that should be introduced in the AFL. I would like to further suggest that if a player tests positive to either, that is illicit or performance-enhancing, they are suspended for the game for a year, they are rehabilitated during that period of time. Their salary is reduced to that of a recruit. If after a year, Michael, they wish to continue, that is the club and the player with a career, then that can be done. But if there is a second positive test, that player is out of the code for life. It's as simple as that. And I'm afraid... The AFL's knee-jerk reaction last night, rushing back from Canberra, having a meeting, putting out a whole range of new issues without addressing the core issue, uh, is just another sign that the AFL is not prepared to take this issue seriously. And taking that further and, and, and uh, just uh, bringing in the enormity of what's involved here, do you believe AFL administrators, uh, Chief Executive Andrew Dimitri all the way down, have been asleep at the wheel on this issue for far too long? Uh, no, they haven't been asleep, but they've always argued that we're putting the interests of the player first. That hasn't worked. More importantly, that has assumed the uh, reputation of the code to a lesser position. Now, the AFL have known about those players who have been taking illicit drugs. Uh, the clubs have not known. The AFL have, according to a report yesterday been encouraging doctors to tell coaches that a player is unfit to play when in fact that player is undergoing rehabilitation. So doctors are being told to tell an untruth or to mislead coaches. That is not the environment for a, a responsible person to be involved in. So the AFL, no, they haven't been sleeping at the wheel, but they've got their priorities totally wrong. What they need to do now is not argue that their first priority is a player. Their first priority is the code and then the welfare of the players. And what I'm suggesting now, zero tolerance, is fair on the clubs and it's fair on the players. Everyone knows the rules. And if you break those rules, then you've got severe penalties to deal with. As somebody obviously deeply uh, passionate about the game, uh, we have this huge question mark obviously hanging over the Essendon Football Club. Do you, Jeff Kennett, in your bones fear that we could see more players and more teams implicated as this crisis unfolds? Michael, I think that's a real possibility. It's no longer about Essendon. I hope that Essendon proves, or, or the testing of what they've taken, the substance, proves uh, that they're in the clear. Certainly a lot of the practices of Essendon need to be questioned. Why a player would allow anyone to inject them with a substance, I have no idea. But those practices should be tested. But I fear, you're right, there will be more disclosures. What I'm suggesting is we ought to have those disclosures quickly. We ought to put a new set of rules into place that are simple and effective and then move on with the game. So, something as well that is tearing at the heart of every sports fan, not just AFL fans this morning, Jeff Kennett, is the suggestion that match fixing could be widespread in Australia. We've seen this enormous rise in the number of sports betting sites, online sites over the years. How much of a problem uh, are they and how, how, how much uh, influence, bad influence, do you believe they are having over sports, fan and sporting, sports fans and sports codes generally? Michael, we've been given this report yesterday but it doesn't, 
it doesn't identify any specific case. It's generalisations. And, look, they may have information there. I don't know. But I've got to say to you, I'm disappointed at the general nature of this report without the specifics. You can't just slam, slam and slur everyone. You've got to be specific. And I hope they will produce the specifics very quickly. I'm not aware of a great deal of match fixing in AFL football at all. There's the odd incident, no doubt, but it's not a generalisation. Uh, so, again, I think we've got to take a deep breath. What worries me on top of all of this is clearly the influence of money and the influence of betting on sport. And I have argued for a long time now, and I've written to federal members of parliament, I would like to see an immediate ban on the promotion of sports betting. The immediate ban throughout the country on sports betting. Because we are now educating a whole group of young children, not only to bet on sport, but during a game of football you might have multiple bets as the game's fortune swing from one side to the other. Now, if the federal government's serious, they have a role in this too. And while some have argued ban sports betting, I'm not sure you could do that, but you could certainly ban the promotion of sports betting. Jeff Kennett, I got the impression that lots of our viewers are agreeing with everything you say this morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. You have a good day.